The simplest one-line definition of the event loop is this. It's the entity that handles external events and converts them into callback invocations. Helpful? Maybe not. Let's try another definition. It's the loop that picks events from the event queue and pushes their callbacks to the call stack. This one is probably worse than the first one. Truth is, it's not easy to understand the event loop without first understanding the data structures it has to deal with. It's also a lot easier to understand the event loop with visuals rather than text. So the next few clips will explain the various things around the event loop with visuals. What I want you to understand first is that there is this thing called the event loop that Node automatically starts when it executes a script, so there's no need for us to manually start it. This event loop is what makes the asynchronous callback programming style possible. Node will actually exit this event loop when there are no more callbacks to perform. The event loop is also present in browsers, and it's very similar to the one that fires in Node. To understand the event loop, we need to understand all the players in this diagram, and we need to understand how they interact. So V8 has this thing called stack, which we're going to cover in detail in the next clip. It also has a heap. The heap is simple. It's where objects are stored in memory. It's basically the memory that gets allocated by the VM for various tasks. For example, when we invoke a function, an area in this heap is allocated to act as the local scope of that function. Both the stack and the heap are part of the runtime engine, not Node itself. Node adds APIs like timers, emitters, and wrappers around OS operations. It also provides the event queue and the event loop using the libuv library. The event loop, as the name clearly describes, is a simple loop that works between the event queue and the call stack. But again, we can't understand it without first understanding those other entities.